Hi, I'm Susan Yaki. I'm the director of the Working Memory and Plasticity Lab and the faculty member at the University of California, Irvine. Uh, in my lab, we study um, how people learn. So we're very interested to understand individual differences in learning. So how differentially that, that people learn and specifically we um, try to come up with intervention to improve people's learning. And we do work across the entire lifespan. So our youngest participants are four years old and the oldest are 85 currently. And we develop intervention for everyone in between uh, these ages. Hi, my name is Ali, and I'm a second year graduate student in the Working Memory and Plasticity Lab. Uh, I primarily work with our older adult study. So we work with older adults that are ages 65 to 85. And they come in and they do uh, a combination of a cognitive training game and we do these motivational workshops with them as well. So we meet a couple times and we talk about how our cognitive functioning changes in aging. Uh, we talk about different kinds of strategies uh, to help with our memory functioning. And we also talk about um, the benefits of living an engaged lifestyle. So our lab is really focused on active aging, so that's one of the main parts of our workshops that we do together. Hi, my name is Jackie and I'm a first year postdoctoral uh, scholar with the Working Memory and Plasticity Lab. My primary focus right now is uh, to employ the use of transcranial direct current stimulation. It's uh, this guy over here. So basically this is a non-invasive method of electrical brain stimulation and we attach these electrodes to uh, people's heads. Um, the project that I'm uh, working on right now looks at older adults, so we're uh, trying to see if the use of this technology can help to uh, stimulate brain activity and improve learning uh, while they uh, train over the course of one week um, on a variety of cognitive training um, uh, regimens. So we're primarily interested in uh, whether we can improve their ability to remember things and their ability to learn and consolidate information. Um, and then we also uh, use fMRI with our studies so that we uh, in addition to uh, various uh, cognitive tests uh, before and after the training, uh, we also use MRI to look at the brain activity uh, to see if there are any detectable differences uh, between those who receive simulation of the training and those who do not.